Welcome back to the trenches at Frederick. Of course, we are trying to push back and or destroy the Union force over here, guys. Destroy some Union trenches, if at all possible. And uh, we got a lot of great advice in the comments. One of those bits of advice was to go ahead and hit the enemy from the flank if we want to destroy the trench. Look at the artillery bombardment we're giving them here. Absolutely amazing. We're also taking our cavalry unit here under frost. And we're going to put them over here and lead them to the woods where our skirmishers are with Jackson. He's firing away at the enemy skirmishers over here and really just trying to well, cause some havoc to the enemy army. For those of you that saw the other part of this fight, you would know that we also sent Hardy's force to take the sunken road. But look at what we've got ahead of us. Potentially more enemy trenches to deal with. Also brought up a second brigade with Bartow. And I'm just going to try to get a flanking shot here. I might even attempt to charge into those trenches. Really curious to see what that's going to bring out of the situation. That's it, son. That's it. I absolutely loved the artillery barrage over there. That was devastating. Look at that. See, look at that. Our skirmishers are already doing a pretty good job. Should we go straight for him or should... No, I think we should go for Hill's Brigade over here. Don't want to bring any unnecessary attention. And let's take a look over here and see if we spot any Federals. Not any Federals yet. We're getting really close with Hardy's men. I want to make that clear. question is, do we bring the rest of the army forward? You know what I am going to do? <clears throat> I'm going to bring forward Jeb Stewart's cavalry. We've got to get some more men in this cavalry unit. He's only got 418 men. That's not enough to have a proper cavalry brigade. At least I don't think so. We've got Frost here with 2,372. Although that doesn't look like 2,372. Uh, they will spread out once they get to that position, however. Come on, boys. On the double quick. Make sure those cannons are still firing away. Those are 24 pound howitzers, friends. Over here, we've got the standard 12 pounders. Well, maybe we just go straight to the sunken road and avoid these guys entirely. In other words, we just kind of continue on to the sunken road. I'm fine with that. Low on ammunition, that's for sure going to be one of our um, skirmisher units. Now let's make sure 2nd Brigade is engaging McCook. This is exciting, guys. He's getting right up close and personal. And actually, I didn't realize, but it looked like Elliot B. Jr.'s group was not actually firing. No! Don't get that close. There we go. Good enough. Good enough. We've got some cavalry as well, guys. I'm going to push forward with the cav. And look at that. They actually prepared for us. That is pretty good AI. Got to give it to them. So they actually got prepared to repulse us. Um, they didn't just remain in their position in the trench, but we are moving through the trench still, boys. Good Frost Brigade, he's going to move forward, and I am preparing for sure to do a charge here. I'm not sure if I want to do a charge into the entire group, the entire regiment, but maybe just that unit right there. There we go, look at that, we got another group of, another small skirmisher detachment leading this area. Doing everything they can to stop this push. Come on, boys. Come on. Get McCook. Get McCook. I think the artillery also just did such a number on the enemy in this fight. Let's get over there with Stuart. Uh, let's make sure that Jackson's still firing. Yep, he's still firing over there at the skirmishers on top of the hill. Now, this is a chance for Bartow to be a hero if only he does that charge. Let's take a look here. Bartow is in contact. We know that much, Barto. We sent you into battle ourselves. All right, go for it. Charge with Barto on McCook. Let's go, boys. Now, unfortunately, our cavalry is quite tired. Frost Brigade is quite tired, although Jeb Stewart's men are looking great. I'm going to charge with Jeb's cavalry. Here we go, boys. Into those trenches we go. Where we come out, nobody knows. That's what I say. Here we go, right in there. That's going to be the first bit of trench combat we've faced in this game. I'm even tempted to send in the skirmishers, but I kind of know better. Um, let's also fire there at the artillery. Again, I'm not sure tired how what good they're going to do us. There we go. And actually, they are the ones faltering. McCook's Brigade is the one faltering. 
There we go, cavalry in there. Jeb Stewart's men, only 400 men. But of course, Jeb Stewart, a well-known cavalry commander in the American Civil War, without a shadow of a doubt here. Looking pretty nice, looking pretty nice. All right, look at that, guys. Breaking two units, man. That is huge. We're still going to try to give them one more volley. Again, we know that numbers are absolutely massive in this fight. Where is the damn cavalry, though? That's what I want to know. Let's grab Frost. We need to stop. He can't be tired and charged. We need to get rid of that tired marker. Rosecrans outflank. Guys, 2,500 men. I'm going to charge. This is 2,500 men that we could take prisoner. There he is. Come on, Stuart. Talk about true trench warfare, boys. We are just forcing those guys out. I'm going to push the um, skirmishers up into the federal trenches. Let's do it. Let's get 2nd Brigade. We're just going to have them turn and fire at Schleich over here. The enemy must not like that. I mean, they've got all of their HQs kind of piled up over there where the men are. That's got to be pretty uncomfortable. And look at this. This is an opportunity not just to charge the rest of these Federals, but to hit that artillery as well. I want to take these guys prisoner, man. Come on. Surrender while you can, Federals. This is, of course, guys, Frederick. It's a city we had already taken before, but the Federals were able to sweep back and retake it after those large battles that we had at Manassas Junction. Um, so, <clears throat> of course, what we're doing now is just trying to get that back as quickly as we can. Hey, Stuart here, let's charge just the artillery. We'll leave the men alone. I'm pretty sure they're going to end up breaking or faltering pretty soon anyway. So in the meantime, let's turn our Lawrence rifles over here towards Morris's brigade. Although we really should be turning it towards Schleich's Brigade there because they're in the trench with us. So let's do that. Come on, boys. You got to reload those weapons faster. For goodness sakes. I like to see that, though. Broke another Federal unit. We're going to bring some skirmishers up. And some of them are going to target Morris. Some of them are going to target Hill's Brigade up on the hill. I've been wanting to say that forever. <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> and yeah, sure enough, we did manage to get the artillery. I'm just going to keep charging this area because I want to grab some prisoners. Um, so with Jeb Stewart, we're just going to try to grab those prisoners. He could, of course, come in on a flanking charge. Keep in mind, this is just 400 men, man. It's nothing serious. It's just 400 men in Jeb Stewart's unit. And they're doing all... They're causing all of this ruckus. Like that, getting hit from both sides over here. And this is actually an entire brigade. I thought it was a skirmisher detachment. But no, sir. This is an entire brigade. We're probably going to stop that movement. But I am getting prepared to charge with him. Yes, even though he's tired. I feel like with 2,300 cavalry, it's not going to make much of a difference if he's tired. But there we go. The enemy is retreating. So now more than ever, guys, we want to go on those cavalry charges really try and just take out as much of the enemy as possible before the battle ends. But I'm not surprised that this one ended that quickly. Um, we did outnumber the enemy. Uh, this was almost just a relief action for the town of Frederick. There we go. Two charges and a victory. 3,500 casualties on the enemy side. Only 300 on our side. An exceptional victory, to say the least. Well, there you go, boys. Can't argue with a victory like that at Frederick. Oh, absolutely beautiful. I've never been so happy to hear a federal song. Oh, no, sorry. This is Bonnie Blue Flag. This is the Bonnie Blue Flag. This is actually a southern song. Wonderful. A wonderful song to play after such a nice little victory. All right, boys. Well, I we'll think we're doing okay now, guys. Army of the Potomac is, of course, still getting those supplies. It's uh, going to be taking some time. They're currently in winter quarters. And, of course, we just beat the Army of the Occupation there. So I will be heading to Frederick, Maryland as soon as possible um, to try and retake the town, of course, cause a little bit more havoc in the enemy army. Now, I do want to take a look at the West because we were having some issues there bringing armies back. Um, but I think we finally put them over here. And that's right. They're building this depot. Uh, and, yeah, look at that. They're actually, after the depot, one of them at least is in pretty good condition. Uh, the other one still needs some time to rebuild his forces, but I think it's a nice 
it's a nice start, guys. Not to mention that Fort Poe garrison over here. It's not a very strong one. It's only 5,000. Um, so I'm kind of tempted to get these armies prepared and attack the Fort Poe garrison. Just gonna look around, make sure we don't have any other armies in contact. We are bringing up the Army of Florida, I believe. Yes, we are. Um, and once we bring them up, we'll have a few more options as well. But we've got one more army right there in Louisville. Good old Louisville, guys. Remember Polk? Should we go for the Army of the West right here? It's 2,600 men. Hell no. Never. <laughs> I answered my own question. Uh, we've got, I believe, the Army, or the Western Army over here. No, we've seen that guy. The Army of the Northwest. That's the one we're looking for, guys. And the Army of the Northwest under Garnett is about to get to Cumberland, Maryland. So that's, of course, the goal is get him to Cumberland, Maryland and take this area from the Federals, causing even more chaos along their lines. I just want to make sure they're not going to cut through our territory, and it looks like we're going to be okay. Johnston is at destination. Good to hear that, Johnston. Are you taking back Frederick's son? I believe he is. Yep, Frederick is once again under rebel control, guys. We're going to have to leave Johnston here. We actually don't have an option, I don't believe, because his readiness is pretty low. Uh, so we're going to have to wait for that readiness to increase as he rearms over there at Frederick. At least to the west or the northwest of Washington, we've got a marauding army. That's got to do something to Union morale. Look at that, guys. We are at Cumberland. Hopefully it's enough to take the city. The Trent Affair. Who wants to tell us about the Trent Affair? The Union Navy steamer stopped the British ship Trent and captured two Confederate diplomats on their way to Great Britain to negotiate recognition of the Confederacy. Unbelievable, guys. Shots fired at a British ship by the Federals. Yeah, this is going to piss the British off, and that's obviously good for us because we desperately need their help. As you can see, the capture only now began, but it's remaining blue. There we go. Slowly turning red, but you can see that this capture of Cumberland is going to take quite a long time. It looks like the people of Cumberland, Maryland are quite pro-Union. Now over here, guys, I know we've said so many times that we're not going to get involved with the naval aspects because it's so tough to beat the Union at sea, um, but I'm looking at the firepower here, man. We've got quite a lot of firepower with this small squadron. I'm so tempted to go and attack the Federals, but I kind of know better. Um, and again, we were trying to get out here with Rousseau, remember, seeing if he could leave the river. He cannot. So Rousseau's group cannot leave the river. The good news is, if any Federals come up that river, they are pretty much finished right away. They have little to no chance of making it out. Let's get up here, boys. Just take a look. Look at that. Gettysburg directly to the north. A little bit too early for Gettysburg, I think, but having Frederick under my control feels pretty great. At some point, we're going to have to decide whether we want to do something over here with Beauregard as well, and maybe just go on the attack. I think it was Napoleon that said that really going on the attack all the time is the way to beat the enemy, never let them rest, etc. And there we go. The Union's credit rating improved. Uh, we're getting pretty close ourselves to the, um, I think it's Cotton is King or something. Let's take a look here. It's going to be King Cotton, only 2.7 days away. I can't wait, guys. We've also got the Army of Northern Virginia over here. So maybe I'm worrying a little too much about um, Beauregard. Like, maybe we should actually be quite aggressive with him, and we should bring the Army of Northern Virginia up where the Army of the Potomac is now. Because we're, be we're remaining a little too defensive in my eyes. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring them up here. I'm going to grab the Army of the Potomac under Beauregard, and I'm going to go to Winchester. That's right. Really uh, moving things around here. Quite literally, of course. <laughs> moving things around. Now, it is slow movement because it is winter. This would be a winter campaign if we decide to attack. And there we go, guys. We got our King Cotton Policy 2. Confederate politicians have agreed to support the nation's agricultural efforts with further funding. Increased subsidies will make plantations across the Confederacy more profitable, increasing the agricultural output, especially that of cotton. And this is going to make uh, the British quite happy, because really the only reason they are interested in being friendly with the Confederacy is to get those cheap cotton prices. Uh, but of course now, we need to jump back into the policies and select another one. Um, we were trying to go down the military path, but this is a tough path to go down without a shadow of a doubt. Um, we go down military two. At some point we have to get to conscription. So for now, let's just stick with Militia Act 2. 
One step closer to conscription, of course. Again, another bit of contact with the Department of the Pennsylvania. And this guy, Robert Patterson, first of all, isn't that the name of the actor from uh, Twilight? <laughs> or is it Pattinson? Uh, it's the same army that attacked us before at the trench. So they're simply coming back with additional forces to strike us at Frederick once again. Now, I want you guys to let me know down below. I still don't mind playing these battles, and actually, this will be a pretty good one because they brought some additional men. But if you guys think that these particular fights, these smaller ones, are not worth watching and you want me to skip them, we can certainly do that, or we can auto-resolve them. Uh, but this one is absolutely worth fighting. They have a lot of guns. In fact, they outnumber us by quite a bit. A lot of our men are wounded or uh, otherwise indisposed. Here we go, boys. Back to Frederick. Maybe this time we'll be the ones with the trenches. Well, I hope you guys have been enjoying this series as much as I have. And of course, we've got yet another battle here in Frederick. Um, I can't wait, guys. We're going to be facing, of course, the enemy. They're going to be attacking us. There's two different victory locations here of import. The one we're directly on and this tiny bridge over here. Now, as mentioned in the comments before, the fact is the enemy has to attack us. So that victory marker, that victory point marker is in our favor every single second. If they want to get a victory, they've got to move themselves up and actually engage. The one thing I will do, however, um, is I'm going to change this position just a bit. Uh, the reason being, if we're right there, if they end up trying to go for that point, we'll see that movement before they do it. Uh, not to mention... This just seems like a better visual of Sharpsburg and a better visual of the overall field. But let's hope that getting into formation, we don't get shot at by the Federals. Come on, come on, come on. Get into formation, boys. One thing is also for sure is that with Johnston's army here, um, it's a great army, but certainly needs more men overall. Although it's, it's not awful, um, but more specifically, it needs more artillery. We absolutely have a shortage of artillery. We're okay on cavalry. We've got two cavalry units. But again, one of those cavalry units, Jeb Stewart's cavalry, they're just not that strong. Um, they're not all that strong. So they, they're very good in combat, but they don't have many men. So we've got to get reinforcements. And once again, it continues to be in our favor. I'm not going to feel comfortable until our men are actually in position. Although I like the realistic setup time for these armies. Obviously, uh, this takes a while to get a proper army set up. It's not as easy as one, two, three. And this game shows that brilliantly. At some point, we might also take some of these cavalry units and just kind of try to scout the enemy, see what they're up to. Um, but I'm fairly comfortable with just remaining here for now. Well, once again, guys, thank you so much for stopping by yet another episode of Grand Tactician, The Civil War. I have made sure to make a new playlist here for you Confederate fans, um, just so that it's not as difficult for you guys to, to find the... Uh, the different missions, uh, the different parts of the campaign, etc., etc. Thank you so much, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one. Glory to the Confederacy!